there's a huge push in Canada for a move towards renewables. And, and it's actually great. So wind turbines have one of the lowest carbon footprints of any source of electricity. There just happens to be this one really bad downside that they will probably drive at least one species to extinction. In North America, the flying animals that are killed the most by wind turbines are bats. Hundreds of thousands are killed annually. 80% of fatalities are of just three species of bat. So the impact to each individual species is much greater than we see with birds, for example. These tree roosting migratory species flying south appear to mate on the migratory pathways. Maybe big tall trees are the places that the males and females get together. And we've put up big tall dangerous structures in terms of wind turbines and the bats are attracted. Now the reason that bats hadn't necessarily shown up in large numbers in North America was that the height and size of turbines had just undergone a big increase. And with that increase came almost an exponential increase in the number of bats killed. 40 bats, for example, are probably not going to be able to sustain their current populations with the number of, of individuals killed at wind turbines. We keep putting up more and more turbines and generating clean energy, reducing fossil fuels, which is good, but that also means that the fatality rate cumulatively in North America keeps going up. And when you consider that bats are really long-lived and reproduce really slowly, the impact of those high levels of fatalities over a short period of time, they just don't have time to recover from that. The population has gotten smaller, so even if a, an individual turbine is killing fewer bats now than it was 10 years ago, the proportion of the population that's being killed is much greater now. If you want to have hoary bats around in 50 years, we need to be thinking broader scale. We have these animals that are they're running a gauntlet. They start in Alberta, they go through Montana and run through the same wind farms and they migrate through Colorado, Wyoming and into New Mexico and all of these places and they're running into turbines the entire way. And we need to look cumulatively what's the effect on the population that's going from northern Alberta down somewhere in the U.S. And if we can figure that out then we can operate turbines normally during the day when there are no bats migrating, normally during rainy weather or really windy weather when the bats aren't flying, and curtail or reduce the operation of the turbines when there are migratory waves of bats going through. It's a fairly short season, six weeks, two months, only at night and only when it's warm, it's not raining, and it's not too windy. That's when the bats are active. And companies have been very successful in reducing fatality rates at wind turbines by taking bat behavior into account and operating the turbines uh, sort of around the bat migration activity.